How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to Rams Revealed. I'm your host, J.B. Long. And doesn't it feel like a new season is underway? Because since we last spoke, a new rookie class has been drafted. The schedule has been released. The players are back on the field in Thousand Oaks for OTAs. And just this week, Kevin Demoff and the Rams announced that SoFi Stadium is planning for full capacity when the 2021 season kicks off. Today's guest is fascinating to me for lots of reasons. Consider that the Rams were the number one defense in football last year, despite losing a starter in the middle of their unit to a season ending injury deep in training camp. He was a bit of an unknown commodity then as a former seventh round selection. And here again, going into this year, not many are talking about Traven Howard, despite I think being a key to combating the ultra competitive NFC West offenses. That's how I see him. That's perhaps the most interesting piece to the puzzle on defense and maybe the player on the roster who might be able to provide what Corey Littleton gave the Rams in 2018 and 19. So let's bring in the newly 25 year old from Longview, Texas, and get to know more about him. Traven, welcome to Rams Revealed. How you doing? How you doing, JB? <laughs> it's wonderful to see you. How is rehab going? What does it feel like to be back on the field? Man, it feels like I ain't been out there in a, so long. It's been a whole year, but rehab is going real well. I've been here the whole time. Um, the training staff has been taking real good care of me, and I'm back full of strength, and I'm, I'm ready to go. I haven't seen a practice in person yet. I'm looking forward to being up there tomorrow. I have seen pictures and videos. Am I correct? You're not wearing a brace on the knee? No, I'm not wearing a brace. I got a sleeve on, but that's, that's as much as I got right now. But I feel real confident, real comfortable, and I'm ready to go, like I said. Oh, that's wonderful to hear that you put it behind you. Sorry to be the guy who takes you back to that moment, but let's do it here, and then we can leave it behind us. Um, last summer, training camp, end of practice. I remember, I think it was a Thursday in late August. I'm standing in a corner of the field with my friend DeMarco Farr, and we see you go down. And I just remember thinking, you know, the Rams were banking on you and Micah Kaiser and some others in the middle of that defense. And I'm worried they just lost you. What are your thoughts and reflections on that day at CLU? Um, that day, it, it was pretty tough. Um, I didn't really know what it was at first, like, because my knee just, it was a, a step I always do. It was like a regular step. Like, I was running right straight <laughs> and my knee popped. And then, like, I didn't think it was that bad. I just thought it was like a little nick. I kind of shook it off and I actually played the next, um, the next period, like four plays, but I really couldn't move like that. Um, and then I went to Reggie, he checked me out. He told me it was a meniscus, but I'm familiar, I'm familiar with meniscus. Like my brother towards meniscus back in high school. I know guy. I've been, I've been playing football for a long time. I know guys that's, that's tore their meniscus and they was back in like six weeks. So I'm thinking it's going to be like a six week process. Okay. I'm going to miss a couple of games. I get right back in and uh, come in full swing. But Reggie told me it was a complete tear. I was out for the whole season. That was, that was a heartbreak. And I ain't going to lie. I went to my car and I broke down crying. <laughs> I ain't going to lie to you. Who was the first person you called or told? <sighs> my mom. <laughs> you probably can guess that though. Yeah. yeah. That had to be hard because I don't think, unless I'm missing something at TCU, you've had a lot of serious injury time during your career. Was this the biggest? Was this the most consequential? Yeah, it was the biggest. I've never had a season in injury ever. Hmm. Any valuable pieces of advice or mentors through this process that got you back to where you are today, Traven? Um, you know, um, Joe, Joe Noboom, he went to TCU. He tore his knee up the previous year. Um, Brian Allen tore his knee up. Um, Rob Havenstein, that was my, that's my locker mate. Um, they were just telling me like what they went through when they tore their knee up and like how it was, how rehab was and the turnaround and they kept me up and kept me posted on how things went when they went through it. And I just took their advice and tried to stay positive the whole time. <laughs> Look, you know, this is not a patient league, right? It's not a forgiving game. Were there moments along the way where you battled that question? Like, did I just lose my chance to be the guy? I did. When Reggie gave me that the talk, <laughs> like I was like, man, this is supposed to be my year. Everybody's like banking on me, man. That, um, like I was ready to go. Like I was ready to set the league by take this league by storm and just it just happened. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you were slated to be a starter then. And since Kenny Young, Micah Kaiser got their chances, Troy Reader. Um, mm -hmm. now the team's drafted another off ball linebacker just outside the top one hundred in Ernest Jones. Am I correct, though, that you're more likely to play alongside Ernest or Micah than necessarily competing against them for reps? 
Oh, uh, I'm not sure it's early, so we don't really know exactly what we're going to do. Um, we'll find out in training camp and see how things go. And y'all will see. <laughs> um, so let's go back to 2019, some brighter moments. And I think where I at least became aware that you might have a future uh, in the middle of this defense, you got your opportunity in the back half of the schedule. I took note of three plays. Okay. I jotted them down. I'm going to read them to you. You tell me if any one of these was your favorite as a pro so far, if there's another one. So the first would be week 14, fourth quarter against Seattle. There was a pass breakup in the end zone from Russell Wilson intended for Jacob Hall. Two would be a week later at Dallas. I know you're a Texas guy. Maybe this one meant a lot to you, breaking up a DAC pass against the Cowboys. And yeah, I should have picked that. That should have been a pick six. That should have been a pick six in front of my people. In front of my people. <laughs> that could have been your kind of young moment right there. Huh? Yeah. yeah. Um, and then week three. Or the, the number three play that I had in my mind was week 17 against the Cardinals. You got two of your biggest opportunities against Kyler and the Cardinals. Uh, you had a tip pass that became an interception for Darius Williams. We all know what's happened to Darius's career since the end of that 2019 season. Uh, now the guy opposite Jalen Ramsey, any one of those plays say like, that's the one that, that means the most to me so far. So far it's probably the one against Seattle because it was my first time like really getting my feet wet in the game, like actual defense. Yeah. But the one in Dallas, that kind of it kind of bites me because I didn't pick it, like I said. But um the the Arizona game was a good one because I played more. I played most of that game. So I, I I like that game. Murray has another snap. He wants to unload, hitches, and it's tip and picked. Intercepted at the 10. Power got a hand on it. Williams secures his second pick in as many weeks. A red zone interception for the Rams on the opening drive of the third quarter. Well, I know Darius had one the previous week against the Niners. He should have had one in Dallas too, but I think you can carve out a little credit for what his career has become by getting him that pick against. Oh yeah, man. I let him know. <laughs> <laughs> I let him know. <laughs> Back then you were playing alongside Corey Littleton and you may have heard, like, I feel like maybe you're the most comparable player to Corey on the roster. Not to say that you're the same, but like skill sets remind me in some ways of what Corey gave this team during his best years. How do you feel about it? Do you like that comparison or leave it behind? Yeah, I like that comparison because it's like, that's all I know, like coming to the Rams, it was Corey Littleton. Um, And just watching his game and watching how he developed and watching what he does and what he do and how he prepares, I I like Corey's game. Like he, it's kind of similar to mine. He does some things that I, you know what I'm saying? I, I do some things a little bit. I feel like I cover maybe a little better. Ooh. Just that, just because it comes from my safety background, he, he might pass rush a little better than me, but I, we're kind of similar, I think, I feel like. Yeah, I mean, I'm not trying to stretch this farther than it needs to go, but you were kind of late seventh round. He was undrafted. Maybe you didn't necessarily start at your respective positions that you're playing now or roles within the Rams defense. So that's where I saw it. And it leads me to this question, like, what's the only three-time leading tackler out of TCU doing on the draft board at all late in the seventh round? I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> like after my after the bowl game, my senior year, my my phone got like silent. Like I didn't hear from anybody. I called a senior bowl. They said they didn't have a spot for me. They didn't know where they would put me. So I I don't know. It was it was a weird it was a weird situation. Like having the career I had at TCU and then going through that was weird. Well, especially now that you're regarded as a potential three down, you know, off ball linebacker, which I think is fantastic let's give you a chance to like rewrite the scatter report, whether it's coming out of college or even right now going into this season, like what should scouts fans coaches know about Traven Howard? What's your skill set? What's the strength of your game? What can you offer Raheem Morris in this defense? Um, I'm fast. I can cover, I can tackle. I'm, I'm a sideline, a sideline guy. And um, I have very good instincts. When you say fast, let's elaborate. How fast are we talking? <laughs> Uh, I just, just know I'm fast. <laughs> and, and the meniscus hasn't cost you a step. Nah. Well, here you are learning another new defense. Is the silver lining that like at least Chris Shula stuck around? Is there some continuity there? Yeah, Shula, Shula's been, Shula being our new coach is, is vital because he was in the linebacker room with us my rookie year. And you know I'm saying I've, I've been getting coached by him since I've been here and I'm ready to get it rolling step in and then do what I was supposed to do last year. (laughs) 
Speaking of your rookie year, I know it's very, very early, but which rookie has made the biggest first impression on you here in 2021? Well, the way things are set up now, we don't really go as hard as we did in my rookie year in OTA, so it's, it's hard to tell. So I guess Ernest. <laughs> yeah. Just because you're exposed I, to him. Yeah, I know him the most, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't well, what's his challenge right now coming from college to this level? Just learning, um, staying in the playbook and um, really honing in on, on the playbook and, and getting a defense and watching Micah, watching Troy Rita, watching all the vets, you know, and just getting in where he fit in. Special teams. <laughs> you know, last summer, Traven, you played the first scrimmage at SoFi, correct? Mm -hmm. So you, you were dressed, you were in that building, you got a taste of it, but not the second for the reasons we already talked about. Um, where were you like physically while your team was playing that pandemic season of 2020? How did you follow along week to week while you're going through your surgery and rehab? I um, came in every day for rehab at the facility. So I was with the guys doing that, but you know, due to COVID, we, I couldn't really be around the players. So I watched from my house, <laughs> watched from the big screen. And, and the reason I kind of asked that is to tee up the next question. What do you feel like it will be like for you emotionally, hopefully, when you play that Sunday night football game against the Bears? I, I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I couldn't tell you. It, it's it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be in the moment. Um, I'm, I'm just ready for I'm pumped. I know I'm going to be live, lit, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. I, I, I can't tell you my, what my emotions going to be that day. Yeah, they might surprise you, right? By the time you get to the stadium. <laughs> Uh, one of the burning questions from the schedule release, I had you in mind because after the Bears drafted Justin Fields, it was like, well, is he going to be making his NFL debut against your defense or might it be TCU legend Andy Dalton? I know he was before your time um, in Fort Worth, but I wonder if you have any thoughts on potentially lining up across from him in week one. Which one, Justin Fields or Andy Dalton? Well, either. Like, feel free to make a prediction. <laughs> which quarterback you're going to see, but more like what's Andy's kind of status going through TCU and would it be kind of cool if he ultimately gets the nod? It would be cool, but you know, we played um, the Bengals back in, in London in 2019 against Andy. So I, I didn't, I don't think I got too many snaps on defense that game, but I did get to play against him. I got his jersey, but it'd be, it'd be cool to play against the Red Rocket. <laughs> it'd be cool. Uh, your number has changed since we've seen you last, just like his team has changed 48 mm -hmm. to 32. That's the number you wore in college, right? Sure. So when you find out that linebackers can wear one through 59 or 90 to 99 moving forward, I had to, <laughs> I had to, as soon as I could, I hey, got a uh, bird on the phone with, um, who was 32 last year? Um, Jordan Fuller. And we made the change. He went to four. I went to 32. And he wanted to change too. So you didn't have to, I was pretty sure he wanted to change. He was four in college. And everybody wanted to go back to their old number. So that's good. I, I want to make sure you didn't have to make a car payment for him or anything. Yeah, I was easy that. transition. <laughs> there you go. Uh, he is Traven the Great on Twitter. He's Traven Four on Instagram. Any other platforms you want fans to know about? Oh, Twitter and um, Instagram. What is where, what's the uh, the genesis of Traven the Great? Where does that come from? I don't know. I, just, I know I needed uh, some social media in um, high school. I needed to make a Twitter for coaches to see me and scout me. So I, that was the first name that came to mind <laughs> and it never changed. I can't wait to get to high school. One more question before we go to Longview, Texas. You just turned 25, right? Were you home? Were you able to celebrate a birthday earlier this month? My birthday always comes around Mother's Day. You know, with me being, I'm a mama's boy, so <laughs> I got to go see my mom on Mother's Day. Like, and I'll celebrate my birthday like the week after. And is she still in your hometown? Mm -hmm. All right. So let's talk about Longview, Texas. I don't think I realize just how impactful that city is in professional athletics, football. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In particular. Like, yeah, Trent Williams, mm -hmm. Chris Ivory, Malcolm Kelly, Bobby Taylor, Josh Scobie even like on the MLB side, uh, home run leader, Chris Davis mm -hmm. is, is from Longview. You forgetting one. You're not an athlete, but you're forgetting one. Oh, I know. Wait, hold on. Are you thinking who I'm thinking? Yeah. Matthew McConaughey. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> He's the most famous person from Longview, right? For sure. To that, I say, all right, all right, all right. Anyways, what's the secret to the Lobo success? Like how did that much talent come through the pipeline? Still coming. It's just, it's a tradition. Like if you're there, you're there. Like 
most of the guys that come through there, their parents played there and their parents played there. So it's just tradition. Um, it's a hard nose run. Of, we still run a power high. You know, every day we, we're hitting is just work hard. We're going to be strong. We're going to be fast. Basically, we're just going to have work. Two other uh, Texas themed questions. They're not my own. They come from a friend who's a TCU horn frog. Uh, he wanted to know what's the weirdest deep fried food you had at the state fair. You're at the state fair. I have the weirdest deep, probably the fried Oreos. Yeah. <laughs> fried Oreos. Yeah. Double stuffed? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Who can tell under that much? Uh, <laughs> um, the other one, I, I can't imagine you have an answer to this, but I'll ask it just in case. Did you ever go two stepping at Billy Bob's while you were a student in Fort Worth? <laughs> You're not going to believe it. I never went to Billy Bob's. Never. Is that, is that a thing? Is that like. I've never gone to Billy Bob's. Ever. It's a thing, but I've never gone. You got better taste than that. <laughs> I've been to uh, West Seven, but I, I've never been to Billy Bob's. How about Elite Brand? What's the latest on your clothing line? Um, we just you know we just dropped our website. Um, we got some clothes out, men's, uh, women, and uh, kids. We have some more women's clothes coming out. Um, some more crop tops, uh, some shirts. We have um, <laughs> going back to school events. Um, all of that, the whole nine yard. Um, looking to have maybe a camp coming up. So we got some things cooking up. And remind me, Elite stands for. Every little inch takes effort. Well, you've obviously put in a lot of effort to this comeback. We really hope you get to capitalize on this opportunity like we thought you were going to 12 months ago. Last thing, Lakers and Suns tied 1-1, game three, Thursday, okay. Staples Center. I know you're a Le- LeBron guy. Are he and uh, the Lakers going to get past the two seed? Yes, for sure. Awesome. <laughs> we hope they do, and we hope you can get, we can get you out to Staples in the next round. Oh, yeah, for sure. Trayvon, it's great to see you and to see you smiling. We're rooting for you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right. For more Rams podcasts, make sure you're also subscribed to Rams Iconic with DeMarco Farr. His latest episode eight features Leroy Irvin. And Serena Morales has Ram Lynn. And her latest guest is the voice of Monday Night Football, Steve Levy. The Rams do have two Monday Night contests in the season ahead. And coming up next on her show is Kirk Morrison with all of his takes on the 2021 Los Angeles Rams. We invite you to join us at SoFi Stadium. Just announced this week that LA County has signed off on fan attendance. So check it out at therams.com slash tickets, therams.com slash tickets. One other housekeeping item. We want to welcome Adam Bronstein to the Rams. He's our new technical producer working with podcasts like these and much of the digital content you'll see and hear moving forward. Thanks to Adam. Thanks to Jory Hirsch, to Travis Langer and to Traven Howard. I'm JB and this is Rams Revealed.